Welcome to the Value Scripts. <laughs> I'm laughing. <laughs> I can't even get to my own intro. All right. Welcome to the Value Script Value Warriors podcast where we bring value every day to the everyday person. And right now we have a very important PSA. My wife has an axe to grind and some air to clear. We have so. a special guest on the show. Okay. With no further ado, <laughs> so let's explain this. All right. Does she have a name? She does not have a name. She does not have a name. So, so my brother-in-law, he's <laughs> like, that was, I don't remember what episode, but he's like, that was such a great episode, but what's with the creepy doll in the background? We've had some other comments, some like other what's people. with the creepy doll? Yeah, yeah. So I have to explain my doll. So when I was a little girl, my great grandparents had a cabin in Strawberry and I would go visit them in, in the summers. We would go visit them. And I remember she had this chest with all of her like keepsake stuff. Well, she had this China doll in there and I loved it. I thought it was so neat. Well, for my eighth birthday, my great grandma gave me this doll. Oh man, now so, we all feel bad. Right. Y'all, she all <laughs> feel bad for the creepy doll. <laughs> no, but I love her because she, that's. Was she, is. Were there any more or was she like solo dolo? This is just No, it was so name. it was she had this doll and she had one other doll. And I'm not sure what Who happened. Got the to other the, one? I'm this not doll, sure. This doll killed it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one no. night when nobody was looking. <laughs> it snuck into its bed. <laughs> so but but I don't know if you can tell, but her fingernails and her toenails are painted. Like it's so she's so sweet. They look like the color of um, dried blood. I was gonna say they're <laughs> no, red. They, they are red. <laughs> they're like this burnt orange color. Anyway, so Cardin, this is why I have the creepy doll. <laughs> and so since, if you've noticed, I moved her because I had her in the little cabin yeah, behind me yeah. because then she's protected from dust. My kids won't break her. Like all the things we're protected. But she's behind glass. <laughs> we, you know, right. <laughs> <laughs> There's a barrier the for her to house, exit. The house is protected. <laughs> Good yeah. So, anyway, very special to okay. me. Well, That's why the creepy doll. The, but I need to find someplace else to yeah. keep her because apparently, like. You know, the, the viewers are noticing. Right. But, you know. I know. And, you know, dolls, I'm not a doll person. I get not, it. She's not as creepy now that I'm looking at her. Right. She's not as creepy. And you know but the from sweet a, story, right? But exactly. Yeah, but, but when you're looking at it in the background was, of the video. Distance, right. It's just a little weird. I get it. I totally angle. get the weird doll thing. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. It's like But my grandma gave it to me. Okay. Yeah. My sister's, my sister's terrified of clowns. Can't do it at all. Nothing. <laughs> I used to collect clowns. It's what? Weird. I did. I did. I didn't find them creepy. Huh? What a coincidence. Cre <laughs> <laughs> clowns and creepy dolls. You that, used to collect yeah. clowns? I did. She also used to love to watch that murder mystery channel all the time. Like, I, my, I killed my husband, and this is how I did it, and oh. almost got away with that kind yeah. of stuff. Yep. Yeah, I was okay. kind of worried for a while. <laughs> he did. He would ask me, he's like, so are you planning to take me out? Yeah, right. <laughs> do, I need, do I need to be concerned? This is, uh, <laughs> right. Every time I turn the TV on, it's on this channel. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah, my sisters do that, too. Yeah, that's interesting. Know. It's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> all right, any other anyway. family history we need to go through? Right. <laughs> Isn't that kind of, I, not to point this out, but on netflix all the it'll give you like the top trending u.s shows or whatever it may be isn't it weird how it's always like about a murderer or just scary stuff is like the top trending uh, like, i don't know it why really is it, 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 it blows my mind. i don't like to pay money to be sad or scared I just don't like, I don't like those emotions. I'm not going to pay money. I'm not going to a freaking haunted house. With my father-in-law. I'm not sorry, Buck. Not going. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to scary movies because I don't like that emotion. So I ain't going to pay to get it. Okay. So we'll put the doll away. But, uh, she's so looking at me now. What I was talking about with the trending stuff. Now that we can transition from porcelain into dolls, it, the porcelain ceilings. Porcelain ce <laughs> <laughs> so now we can transition to what is also trending in the news. Yeah. Italy. Ah, so the Prime Minister of Italy. Yeah. Interesting. It's interesting how it's, it, the most interesting thing to me about this whole thing is how it's being spun. And depending on where you get your news, you may think of it differently based on how that's biased you to think already. And it's the funny thing about it is once you see something a certain way, even if you don't think of it that way, yeah. if that's your first introduction to it, it's going to bias how you think about it. And the news media knows this. Yes. Right. So first of all, I'm just going to get this ran off my chest. Stop watching the news. Stop watching the cable news. It is propaganda 
And it is emotionally manipulating your brain. All of it. And it's making you do stupid things. Like wearing a mask in your freaking car. You're the only person in it. You don't need to wear a mask. <laughs> no, I have been, I have done that when I forgot to take my mask off yeah. after I left the office back in the pandemic because I was just wearing a mask all the freaking time. Yeah. But um, you just, man, if you watch the news every night and you wonder why you're depressed and anxious, yep. stop watching the news for six months. I guarantee your life will get better. And people are like, how am I going to know what's going on? How am I going to be informed? I don't know. There's a little thing called the internet. You can find everything that you want on there. You don't uh -huh. need to be manipulated by these newscasters and these big media companies that are just using you for revenue. Stop being, stop playing the game. Well, just to even show the manipulation, for example, I just typed in Italy prime minister on YouTube. First two things that came up, one from Good Morning America. The title is Italy elects first female prime minister. That's it. So like, again, that's what's up. Glass ceilings, right? Just broken yeah. glass ceilings. Awesome. Just great. Awesome. Now, right. the very second, the very next episode, CNN. Italy elects most far right government since World War II. Like how? Why are we bringing it back to World War II? Like comparing <laughs> us to like they're already setting up for her to be a fascist type leader, which actually is the opposite of her platform. Her platform is to get the government out of your lives. Her platform is for freedom and families and for being able to be who you are and feel comfortable in your own skin without worrying about what label you're getting and whether or not you're creating a hate crime by being yourself. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it's ridiculous. People are sick of it. Vice World News. Italy could elect its first far right leader since Mussolini. Far right. I mean, we're talking of Italy, guys. How far right is this? Yeah, exactly. It's not Donald Trump. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, just this is what I'm talking about. The news just and it biases you now. Now you're thinking, oh, she's far right. Oh, she's far right. Well, how far right is she? Yeah. I, I think mean, we should I mean, play a clip and talk about where she is, and then you guys can decide on your own whether or not she's far one way or another, or if you really agree with her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, that's see, that's the problem with the bias in the news. You may agree with this person and what they have to say, but if your favorite news outlet paints her in a bad light from the beginning, you're going to be tarnished by that, and it doesn't matter what she has to say. You're going to be biased by your first impression. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and we do that. Bias is strong in in, in our cognitive in, in our cognitive thinking. Like cognitive thing. Well, it's a, a wrong way to say that. But anyways, in our cognition, bias is is powerful. Well, everyone is so much like. Oh, I'm color blue. Oh, I'm color red. Oh, I'm color orange. That's my person. This is my person. Well, my person said this, so this is how I think now. Right. It's like mm -hmm. there's no individuality anymore. Well, and I do that from time to time. I mean, there's people I prefer to listen to. Yes, there are pre uh, like, you know, preference. Like, all, almost anything that comes out of Jordan Peterson's mouth is just like gospel, man. It's gold. Al almost everything. It's, gold. it's just perfect, right? But not everybody thinks that. But yeah, I, yeah. I do, right? Yeah. <laughs> but that's a bias of mine. But that he's, is true. But he's, he's got pretty good stuff, and he's pretty dang smart. Yeah, so but that his also isn't electoral stuff, really, is it? Not necessarily. Political. He does talk about politics somewhat, but yeah. yeah. I mean, he's from Toronto. He he got uh, he was you know a tenured faculty member at the University of Toronto, and um, because of the politics, he left. Well, uh, Trudeau Castro. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sorry, yeah. that'll be it. That'll that's be another conspiracy that's, theory. Yeah, that's, that, that's for the tinfoil hat episode. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna be picketing for a new freaking editor over here. <laughs> um, so I'll show you a clip from uh, David Harris. He it's is, a clip of her speaking, though. It is her, it is her speaking. If you're on Apple. Spotify stuff like that. It's going to be a little odd because it's in. Italian. Yeah, so that's one of the plugs for watching this on YouTube is we can put close up because she's speaking Italian. You got to have the subtitles. Yeah, and we'll try to we'll try to blend blend the difference here for you. The other di queste domande. A monte c'è quella che ci facciamo oggi perché la famiglia è un nemico. I love it. She's talking about like why you know she ran on a big family platform and there was a lot of opposition there and she's like why is the family the enemy. Like, why, why is the family unit the enemy? Why is being a mom and a dad the enemy? Why is it so threatening, right? And she's like, why is, you know, why is the gender issues coming up and being pushed so hard? Why is the race divide trying to get pushed so hard? Why are they trying to claim we're already in a civil war on, on certain news outlets um, and trying to push a narrative of, of public distress and dissonance between each other why can't we push a unifying narrative right mm -hmm. family units are unifying right 
Um, and, and she says the reason, it's a very simple answer to all these questions, is because these things define our identity. And everything that defines us individually is now becoming an enemy. Because if you're, if you're an individual and you have your individual freedoms, you're a free-thinking individual, somebody that can think on their own, that doesn't have to have the big media tell them what to do, then you're not going to be just the slave consumer that the big media and the big corporations are trying to get everybody just to become. Mm -hmm. And the governments are complicit in it. And that's what all this is about. And she's like, you know, she just said, she, I love that she just said, what you know, they attack. At? I'm at 140. Well, I have a minute and 40 seconds left. So yep. 20 seconds in. Yep. You know, she's talking, they attack gender identity. They attack family identity. I can't define myself as Italian, Christian, woman, mother. No, I can't do that. You know, I must be citizen X, gender X, parent one, parent two. I must be a number. And only because when I'm a number, I no longer have an identity or roots. Then I will be a perfect slave at the mercy of financial speculators. And I think, man, it's just, you know, you'll be the perfect consumers, I said. And to me, like, I don't know, that, it's just, I think it's the heart of the problem. I don't think people realize, like, when COVID came out, everybody was so scared and they use they just fear mongered the hell out of that situation, which again, I mean, at the worst, at the most deadly, that was like what you had a one percent chance of dying, and we know yeah. people that died. Like I have, I have people that I lost that mean a lot to me, that that died from that. So not to mock it, it was a virus that was that was serious, and there were some serious problems. But the fear mongering that came out of that, I mean, and then the and then the virtue signaling that came out of that, and and the division that came out of that was calculated. No, I, my, my cousin is a physician. He says, you know, people don't realize back when COVID first started happening, he was like, people don't realize that some of the worst cases I see all the time anyway is, you know, middle-aged men with no, not middle-aged men, like 30, 30 to 40 year old men. So really not, they're still, still young and vibrant and healthy. But I'm in danger. The, right. And, you know, um, that come in with no pre-existing conditions and they die from the flu. He's like, it, he's like, it, people don't realize that that happened anyway. And it was already yeah. happening. That was just the flu. And COVID was a little worse than that. It was yeah. a little more contagious. And it was, you know, there, for some people, it really rocked their world. Yeah. I had it twice and it sucked. Yeah, I, I had it, you know, I had it once and it was not fun. There were some um, side effects from that. But fortunately, I had a really mild case. But I also had... <laughs> I also have medications that I feel like helped me through that hmm. it, that people then you know mm -hmm. didn't necessarily want you to have. But ivermectin, I swear, uh -huh. did wonders for me. I swear <laughs> it did. But look at what the media did with that. I know. Well, but you know the what funny is thing. Is so again, they said it's a horse dewormer. Yeah, or horse dewormer. And there were people. <laughs> and then they ran this. There were hundreds of people in the hospital in Oklahoma from an overdose of horse dewormer, which wasn't even a true story. But they never ran the counter that. Oh yeah, we just made that up. Right. When they came they out, it out, when it came out, there was proven that they just made that up. Right. But the other thing that was frustrating, too, is we have military documents that in the beginning of the pandemic that said, OK, and even from Fauci himself, the Fauci, the Fauci emails got hacked. Fauci was telling his colleagues to stock up on ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine because they knew from China that it worked. Yeah, <laughs> they knew from the from the information we got from China that it did work. And then was the first thing they do. They banned it. Why? Right. Yeah. Anyway, not to what, get back on that. What rant, happened but, with uh, but, Trump? Because didn't Trump get COVID? But then he was he right. Did. Sprayed. He, did. he had like COVID. Two days. But they they hit him with the whole thing too. He had ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine. They did um, the uh, antibodies mm -hmm. um, that you know were banned by a lot of liberal governors in those states. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But yeah, um, the those antibodies were. Life saving. It seems like all the life saving treatments that were that we know to work were just coincidentally banned. And this, I think, it's what this prime minister is speaking to. Like, look, if you're an easily controlled population, you know, you're going to do whatever the news and and the big corporations tell you. And we're, you know, the people are sick of that. The people don't want that. They don't want to be controlled. They want to be free. Mm -hmm. She really does nail it too, because it's not just it's not just an isolated part of our identity it our identity is being attacked on every front from racism to gender to parenting to marriage to religion like every single aspect is being attacked and the reason why is so that they can have control and i wanted you to talk about Olga's perspective on that, oh. what she said because that really so i have a, I have a friend that immigrated here from the soviet union is it the Soviet Union? Yeah, it was, uh, it was, when did she come? I can't remember. But I do know, I do know that she got married to be able to come to America. 
because the only way they could get a visa to come to the United States was to be married. So um, it was right. She was right out of high school. She married her boyfriend and they came to the United States. And she said, when we met with COVID, well, one time we met during the, the, the COVID scare during the height of things. And, and we were um, meeting at Starbucks talking and she was saying, this is terrifying to me because when the Bolshevik resolution came out, the first thing they did was they got rid of individual identity. The first thing they did, everybody, whether you were a mom, a dad, a grandma, a grandpa, a kid, you were called comrade, period. It, it was illegal. They made it illegal for you to call anything, anybody anything other than comrade because they just wanted everybody to have the same identity, essentially. Like, you know, the whole things were like, well, we're starting to get there, right? Like, dads can be moms and moms can be dads and some dads are dads and some dads are moms and some dads are not either of them. And like, it's And like, today it's, I choose to be this and tomorrow I might be something and different. It's, it's and erasing an identity. And almost if you have an identity, you become the problem now. Like in society, like people... I, I I used to have some social fear of if I don't conform, people are going to hate me. And I just realized people are going to hate you anyway. You might as well be yourself, right? And so that doesn't really necessarily resonate with me. But, you know, I feel like as a, it's a problem in society when we are just exploiting everything we can. And so the extremes are looked at as normal. And the normal is now looked at as an extreme. Mm-hmm. And there's a reason why we're being manipulated this way. We're being led down the path towards global socialism. And that is exactly what is happening. And that is exactly what she's standing up for. And that's why those that want to push the agenda are calling her the most far-right conservative leader the Europe's seen since World War II. Well, what happened in World War II? Well, you know, there's debate as to whether you would paint Hitler as a liberal or a conservative person. But I can tell you, this, I, it's pretty simple for me. There is a movement that is fighting for individual freedoms, individual liberties, and to make sure that those stay intact. And there's a movement that's wanting to take that away from you and give the state the power to tell you when you can leave your house, when it's okay to go to the store, what it's okay for you to drive, whether it's an electric car or not. There's a movement trying to take away all of your freedom and totally control you. So I don't necessarily want to lean, you know, conservative, liberal, whatever, just saying there's, there's movements here that are aimed at either maintaining our freedoms or taking away our freedoms. And wherever you stand on that, you know, you need to detach yourself from the hype, detach yourself from necessarily from the label of I'm a Republican Mm -hmm. because I'm not even a Republican most of the time. But I do believe in freedom. I do believe in individual choice. I do believe that our Constitution needs to stay intact. Um, But uh, yesterday, lawmakers are pushing to... Uh, give Californians, this is just in California, to give California residents a thousand dollars if they don't own a vehicle. <laughs> Good heavens! Just brilliant. That's also the same state that's encouraging <laughs> everybody to get electric cars. Has vowed to never open another gas station again. Yet at but the same time, them. you can't charge your car because they cannot produce enough energy to charge <laughs> well. everybody's electric cars that they have currently, which is not the majority of the population yet. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, not even close. Yeah. Good job, not California. Way yeah. to way to bring us into the Stone Ages. Winning. Awesome. But that's again, you know, maybe you like that. If you do, move to California and and enjoy it. But if you don't, don't California my Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> you know, it sucks because I use because I, I was born in California. And then moved to Montana. But I used to be, like, somewhat okay with being born in California. It was cool. It was, like, the beaches. California's a beautiful yeah, state. California's amazing. You know? There's amazing resources. There's some amazing people. I mean, yeah. it's it's a beautiful state. Yeah. It's an amazing but state. But what it's turned into, though, like, it's I, it's almost embarrassing for me to even say I was even born there now. The political poetry. I don't know. Yeah. So I know that you need to feel that way. But, you know, like, New York City, for instance. Like, what an amazing city. What an amazing city. I love New York City. You couldn't. You probably would catch me dead if you went there. I was say, you couldn't catch me dead there. But if I went there, you know, crime's bad enough, I might be dead. Yeah. I'm not going back. <laughs> you know, they ruined it. They ruined it. Like, yeah. how, how is it okay so to just let all this lawlessness go, you know? Yeah. Like, are you guys really okay with that? Are you really okay with these DAs that aren't prosecuting violent crimes? Oh, my gosh. Or that are letting right? violent it's offenders out? I mean, are, are we really okay with this? We'd really love to know. Let us know. Drop us in the comments. Like, how do you guys feel about this? Because we want to know. I know that we don't think the way everybody listening to this show does. And that's, I think that's actually healthy and good because if 
everybody thinks like me, the world's going to be a hell of a boring place <laughs> and, yeah. and it's not going to be beautiful and it's not going to be different and there's no going to be no variations. Like it's our, our differences are beautiful, right? But we don't need to use our differences to divide each other. We need to use our differences to help unite each other. And that's the difference. Like I'm different than you, you're different than me. And we've had a variety of guests on the show and we all love each other. And that's how it's supposed to be, man. Like we're supposed to take our differences and make each other great together, not use those differences as ways to tear each other apart, make mm-hmm. society worse. And I feel like most people get that. Just the heart of America. I feel like people get that. It's the but they media, don't vote that way. But it's the media that is pushing a counteractive thought that really does not resonate with most people. Well, I and then, really feel like that's and true. And then they're really good at like blindsiding you. Like, I really feel like a lot of liberal leaning people were going to not vote for their liberal candidates again until the Roe versus Wade came, thing got overthrown. And all of a sudden, that's the biggest gift the Democrats ever got in this election. Right. You know, it was because now people are like, well, yeah, these guys are ruining the country, but I believe in reproductive rights and that's fine. Like, but but if you really believe in reproductive rights, are you really going to vote for the people that ultimately are going to take away all your rights? Right. It doesn't make any sense to me. But and your best chance... Your best chance of having the reproductive rights you want is to dig in, in your states, the states where you live, and influence the legislation. Like Arizona really doesn't have enough legislation uh, on this. And so I think a judge just reenacted a, what did you say, 1864 law, and that's what's defining our abortion laws right now. That may not be in touch with our population, and that may not be what our population needs. So let's influence that here and let's make it better. Let's not cry and whine about what Washington, D.C. does. Let's fix it at home. Let's fix it here. Let's fix it where you live. Influence it for good. And you know, and, and I know abortion is one of those like just lightning switch issues. Like, oh, man. it's so polarizing, and I don't. Yeah. Really, I'm not trying to create a division on this either, but I'm just as an example. Like, if you're voting for people that are going to be more restrictive on your freedoms, you're not going to get what they're promising you anyway. For sure. Did yeah. they legalize marijuana yet? Sure. They promised that before they before they got elected. But then the big pharma that they're in bed with, they don't want it to be legalized. And so guess what? It's not. Like, there was a big lie. Like, just time after time, we're not going to raise taxes. Oh, we did raise taxes. Oh, but it's not going to be on the middle class. Oh, yes, it's going to be the biggest hit to the middle class and the poor people. All the time, guys. If you're tired of getting duped, start voting different. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, it's just along the same lines of uh, Biden wiping the student loans. It's like, yeah, it sounds great vocally well sure but i mean if, we're gonna get taxed more yeah I don't, you know mm-hmm. i i got you know whatever six figures of student loans and it'd be you know sure some i don't have to pay them off but i don't think the the working class truck driver that didn't go to college should have to pay for my student loans yeah <laughs> you yeah. know that's not fair to them yeah. well, they, they like, chose not to go i chose to go and i knew what i was doing for yeah. sure yeah. and yeah. like raising minimum wage everybody was like yeah yeah let's do it but then when they're hamburger at mcdonald's goes through Doubles. the roof like it, uh, they just don't realize I remember, a lot of people don't i remember it. during covid i saw a sign at an in and out that said starting wage at 21 an hour yeah and that at was in tough and out. that was tough because we're trying to maintain employees and um but when you got chick-fil-a and these other places like we had an employee quit to go be a manager at, at burger king that's what i'm saying and like, and she was a phenomenal assistant she, and I would have done anything to keep her, but she just wasn't interested. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's hard to be when you're, when those opportunities are out there, but it's like at what cost, mm-hmm. you know, yep. but, everything, everything trickles down. And it's like even gas. So like, you know, the other thing is you're getting duped on right now. The whole country is getting duped on this gas price. It's like, oh, gas price is a little lower. Yeah. Well, don't think that that's because of policy. That's because of tricks. You know, we just released a ton of oil from the strategic oil reserve which needs to be a reserve for a reason, <laughs> yep. but we released some oil there. And so we artificially dropped some gas prices, but the global economy, the supply chain of oil and gas did not get better. So no. all that really did was it made it so we have less reserves now. And so when that trickles through the market, it's actually going to get more expensive. And then we have to refill our reserves. Right. My prediction is my prediction is gas gets higher than it ever was coincidentally right after the election. Hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully I'm wrong. Uh, And if I am, I'll come right back here on this show. I will stamp this. I would would love to be wrong on this. I would love to eat these words. This is uh, September 26th. This is Monday that we're shooting. So, hey, we'll come back to this if if you're right. I would absolutely be wrong. I would absolutely love to be wrong. Yes. I would love to be wrong on all of it. I really would. I would love to think you're wrong, but I don't think you're going to be wrong. 
it's it's, uh, it's all the conspiracy theories that I used to wonder if I was sane by believing them have been many of them have been proven to be true the last mm-hmm. couple. Of That's years. what the scary thing is is that a lot of these things are so astronomically like just off the wall that I think that I'm a conspiracy theorist, but then all of a sudden it comes true, right? And I'm mm-hmm. like, wow, oh, what the heck? Yeah, right. the, we're living in a clown town. Totally, it's yeah. crazy. So again, again, um, not to offend people with labels because I don't want to do that. It's not my intention. My intention is to help you think. My intention is if you like your freedom, you like your First Amendment rights, you know, a lot of people, Second Amendment, again, a divisive issue. But if you like your First Amendment rights, you like your Second Amendment rights, you like the the things that our Constitution does for us and allows us to live free and be Americans, you might want to start voting for it. (laughs) You just might want to start voting for people that are going to maintain that and keep that in place. And if, and if you lose it, maybe you shouldn't be so surprised. I just want everybody to start thinking and wake up before it's too late. I'm pulling uh, one more clip before we uh, close I was going to say, that would have been a master close, bro. I know. I know. <laughs> Come on, bro. No one who was alive today had ever experienced a true pandemic. And I'm hoping that now that this is over, people are going to you know, recognize that some serious errors were made and not repeat those. That's the best you can get out of it. So what do you tell those people? Vote Republican. (laughs) 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 And honestly, man, the way that... I don't know. That really, sadly, is not the answer. Look at how spineless most of those stupid Republicans are. They don't stand up for anything anyway. They just get their buddies to sign in on their co-written bills and then they cave and do whatever anyway. Yeah. Like, they're most of them are the problem too. Yeah. Right? I mean... Gosh, I get I get more and more libertarian all the time. Like, get the government out of my life. Yeah. Let us let's go back to what this country was supposed to be. Land of opportunity, land of freedom, land of hope for everybody, for the whole world. Right? There's a reason why people are coming here illegally. There's a reason there's people really aren't going the other way, right? But we're gonna lose all of that if we don't wake up, start making some different changes here, guys. It's it's um it's sad. And I'm terrified actually for the future of this beautiful country that I love. Yeah, it, it is scary. It's really scary. So again, vote for people that are encouraging freedom. Vote for people that are encouraging unity, not division on 5,000 levels of class differentiation that we can make or gender differentiation or whatever. And and usually the people that are screaming racism are the most racist. And usually, I'm not saying always. Usually people that are screaming divisiveness are the most divisive. Usually people that are screaming fraud are the ones out committing the fraud. And time and time again, if you peel, peel, peel the curtain back, it's evident. So just use this. Hopefully this inspires you to think. Hopefully this inspires you to go to action. The best action is local. Dig in where you are. You don't like the school system where you are? Get on the school board. You don't like the, the town being run the way it is where you live? Get on the town council. You know, go out and vote. Don't sit there and just watch it all happen and then be like, oh man, this really sucks. Because that's going to be a very bad situation when you find yourself realizing, I didn't do anything to help this, but I don't like it. So get out and vote. But again, vote for those people that are going to support the lifestyle you actually want, not the label you think you fit under. And that's all I got for you today. Thanks for tuning in. I thought this was a fun episode. Hopefully you liked it. Please share it to those that you feel would find value here. And again, we'll see you next time on The Value Script.